I so wanted to hear that song today. Guess that's gonna be my that's gonna be my theme song for firewalking from now on. I love that song. And if you don't know who Michael God is, Michael uh, was uh, uh, playing a piano in a gay bar in Dallas. The Reverend Marty Bacher. Well, why was Marty Bacher in a gay bar? Anyway, Marty Bacher went in there and heard him sing and said, I want you to come play at my church. And David looked at him and he said, do you know where you are? Uh, so, so he did. And not only now is he not a magnificent new thought uh, musician and talent in our movement, but he's the assistant minister at the Golden Triangle uh, Unity Church in Houston, one of the largest unity churches in the world. Wow. I know, I know he's doing great. He's doing, he has a fantastic ministry. So, um, what do you think of the new look? You, you might be surprised this did not just suddenly appear this morning. <laughs> And I think it's worth hear you hearing the story of it and how it came about. It began when Carol Byro said that the uh, plastic greener up here had run its course <laughs> and that we needed something new. And Carol's vision, where are you, Carol? I know you're there. There you are. So Carol's vision was to have uh, seven glass vases that would represent the seven chakras, right? That was her idea. And so Barbara and I said, well, okay, let's, let's give it a go. And Carol brought some of the vases because she hadn't found all of them yet. But she brought the ones she had over and we set them up. And there was a wreath up there and we went, nah, that doesn't work. So we said, let's do a science of mind teaching symbol. Now, you may think that that's a logo. It's not. That's our logo, all right? That's our branded logo. And most of the centers for spiritual living around the world use that burst. And so if you see that somewhere, the branding says that's the same kind of place. This is our teaching symbol. That's different. Actually, I think when we got a logo, it elevated our teaching symbol so that we could really have that as the principal tool for teaching our philosophy, which is what it is. We'll get back there in a minute. Back to the story. So we, we put it up. It didn't work. We said, okay, let's do that. And we considered lots of possibilities. Uh, and one of them was to, to have it made of, have something made of metal, to go to some metal works and have something constructed. A forgery. A forger, that was it. Not, not a forgery thing. <laughs> a metal forgery. That kind of thing. And, and that didn't work out. And we thought, maybe we'll make it out of some kind of Foam material painted will look okay. That didn't. So it was John Gustafson said that said to us, "Why don't you do it out of uh, plywood? Plywood? Yeah, plywood. Easy. Put two pieces down uh, next to each other and put glue down and then cover it." And so we said, "Okay, we give that a try." And then draw it out and cut it out. And it sounded good on paper, uh, and it actually began to work. So that was the plywood. Just plywood, all glued together, an inch thick. And then Rick Sherrill, or actually I, I took that and drew the, the symbol on it. And Rick, with a little jigsaw, started cutting and cutting and cutting and went all the way around it and inside it and to where all the wood that was left was that. As you can, you can see, he also took a router and he beveled the edge all the way around it. People have looked at that when it was in this raw state, and people, carpenters, and people, woodworkers, and said, that's really hard. <laughs> Yet he did it. I don't think he knew it was hard at the time. <laughs> <laughs> it really helped. It worked out well. So that was the, that was the raw uh, wood that we, that we created. From there, it was primed by Dr. Barbara. Yeah. Nice job, although kind of, kind of flat. So then she painted it gold, antique gold, and finally Breezy came and, and put a uh, chocolate brown uh, accent around the edges. I put the, uh, uh, the lighting on it, on the back, and we had an electrician come in and do some wonderful electrical work so that we could actually hide the cord. And then uh, uh, it was Michael and Stephen and Rick that came and put up scaffolding up here and put this whole thing up. 
<laughs> and so there it sits. Now, uh, back to the, to the bottles here, the, the, the vases. We had, we had uh, five of them that were, that were set that Carol had found, and that was really working. Um, we needed a blue one. So Kristen, who is an excellent shopper, so she explains to me, <laughs> went out on Monday and found a blue vase to go there. Yay! But still, we didn't have a yellow one. Now, you can tell we have a yellow one now. Let me tell you how that happened uh, online. Yellow vase yields no decent results for this kind of an application. So I called Victor Teresia, and I said, Victor, I got a big favor to ask of you. And he said, sure. And he made this beautiful yellow vase. Wow. This is a hand-blown vase by a world-class glass blower, master. So understand that uh, as you look at these beautiful vases, the, the, the retail price is in the range of fifteen to twenty dollars, fifteen to twenty dollars, oh three thousand dollars, <laughs> right on down. So it's quite a, a valuable collection when you add it all together. <laughs> and so here, here we have. Oh, and there's stands in here too that they sit on where light shines up through them. Uh, thank you again, Rick Sherrill, for your craftsmanship of building those platforms so that they could all look so elegant up here. Yeah. This took a lot of work. Yeah. Yes, and, and that, this is good. Other than uh, Victor's beautiful yellow one here, the rest of them are actually glued down so as not to uh, in any way be knocked over by the children when they come in. <laughs> Smart move, eh? So thank you, Barb and Nancy, for doing that. So here's the deal. If in telling the story of how this occurred, I called your name, I said your name, I want you to come up on stage because it's time for a blessing. Because this is big. Reezy has a lot of sanding. Michael, come on. I have some people that will be resistant. So I have to call them by name. There we go. There we go. And Carol, you started this, so you stand in the middle. <laughs> Yeah, there's Steve. There's Steve. Here comes Breezy. Fantastic. Just a couple of days ago, the stage was covered with scaffolding. <laughs> so you know the drill. I'm going to let you go ahead and begin it. <laughs> we love you. We bless you. And we know you are perfect. <laughs> It took all of us to do this and make this so elegant. And we'll, this we'll have here for, for many, many, many years. And it's because of your vision and willingness to see this. And you. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Give them one more gift. Michael wasn't feeling well today. Uh, I had his wife call him and say that I needed him. And so we rallied and got her. And so that's what I needed you for. All right. Oh, my goodness. So, um, th and thank you again, Olympia, for that amazing song, That's What I Needed. I think what I'd like to do now is tell you why this is so important to us. Many of you know, many of you have taken classes and you understand what this symbol means, but some of you may not, and everyone could use a review on the first of the year. So I very quickly want to run through this. The circle is everything, seen and unseen, the visible, the invisible, anything that has to do with anything that exists is in that circle. I know, it's a limiting thought that you could put it in a circle, but that's what the circle represents, the allness of God. Those two lines divide the circle into three parts. The top part is the invisible creative essence of the divine. Everything starts and is initiated in that place. It's not a place. It's an, it's, it's an essence. And it is the thing that starts everything. You know where it is? It's in you. That is where you are. In this circle, that top portion is where you are. Absolutely. The middle of this circle represents the divine law of spirit, the creative law. That which takes what Holmes said was the impress of our thought and turns it into something that we can see. 
It's through that thing through which manifestation and demonstration occurs. We think, and then something shows up in our life. It's the law that does that. It's the mechanism. How does that work? I have no idea, but I know it works. That's what's important to know. The bottom part is the manifest world. It's the physical world. It's the effect. It's the stuff. It's the stuff you can see and experience through your senses, and it's everything that you can feel. All of that is that bottom portion. So we've got cause at the top, effect at the bottom, the law in the middle. That's the structure of the universe. Everything works according to that. Life was thought into existence, and this is the design. That is not a V. Looks like a V. Not a V. It has several interpretations, but I'm going to use my interpretation. I think that's oh look, I got my little thing. So this this is a, is actually a symbol of action, how creation occurs. All creation starts up here, all of it, and it is impressed upon the law and moves into physical form. That's what we express into life. Everything that we express into life is on that line. And then, this one coming up, that's us experiencing it, seeing it in physical form and experiencing it. And if you'll notice on this slide, there's a, whoops, whoop, get way, way, way ahead of myself. Way, way, way ahead of myself. Let's hit the red button. That right there, that little turn, it's even up there. That means it continues on. It's going to happen again. You're going to create something. Most people create it from what they experienced. Get the wrong button. There it is, right down here. And they think that's the way it is. But the truth of it is, whatever you want it to be is the way it is. So the idea of taking this simple little symbol, this series of ideas, and putting it right in the middle of what you got to look at when you come in here, emblazons it upon your consciousness so that every time something in your life isn't working, you're going to say, I have never given thought. You're going to be right here. You can't get away from it anymore. No more pretty wreaths up there. This is how it works. This is how it works. And this is what we use to turn our lives around. Ben, you figured it out. Good for you. Google stock is selling well these days. <laughs> He's doing good. Oh, man. So this is how, this is what we're about. In basic terms, this is what we're about. Now let's talk about these, these uh, uh, vessels that sit, sit up here. The seven chakras. This is ancient, ancient uh, Sanskrit stuff that says that this is how the body works, but there are really energy portals in the body, energy centers. They're called chakras, but that's a Sanskrit word. Who cares? They work. You actually express an experience through these seven centers of the body. They are not accidental. They really do have an influence on how you interact with life. That's why we play these bowls that are attuned to the seven of them to begin every center, to line them up so that everything about us is clear and centered and focused on who we have come here to be. So that as we sing these songs and speak these words and hear these messages, we are actually receiving it completely within our being. Let's go through them. This one over here is the red one. That's the root chakra. That's our, our, our groundedness, our centeredness, our, our knowing that we are, we are, we are moving forward in a, in a balanced, organized way. We are not freaking out about life. We are grounded. And that's the place where we do that. This one, the orange one, is about our, our uh, sacral uh, center. And that's our relationship center. That's our connection to life to seeing to one another, to having one another in our lives. We do that at that point of the sacral. This amazing presence is the solar plexus. This is the power center. This everybody that is in martial arts uses those solar plexus as that center from which they experience their power. They're, they, they're able to, to know who they are from that place of the solar plexus. Mm. The center one is the heart. 
We all know what the heart is and that we experience and express our connection to one another, our love for one another in that way. This is the, uh, the, the blue of the, of the throat chakra. And the throat chakra is about communication. Not just about, about speaking what is true, but also understanding and receiving that which is true. And then we have this one, which is indigo. indigo. Thank you. The indigo is the uh, is the color of the of the third eye, which is our ability to see the whole picture. When we get centered from our third eye, we go, oh, I see, I get it, I understand. <coughs> and then, of course. The violet is the, is the crown chakra, which is that, that place of connectedness to, to all of spirit, to know the truth of our spiritual nature. These are all important, so don't think that Barbara got all the good ones on her side of the stage. <laughs> they all fit together to make a human experience. And when we're aware of, of how we are tuned in this way, and when we pay attention to this, our life works better because we are balanced. So we come to this place to get clear, to be balanced, to know the truth of who we are. Now I wanna talk about this idea of moving forward. Again, going back to that song, that song that just to me seems so appropriate for today. It's January 1st. It's a new beginning. I think that's what that's gonna say, new beginning. <clears throat> we can have a new beginning at any moment. The native people can tell you that. Standing in the east, as they say, means starting over. Do it again. It can come in a moment. Barbara and I used to use it like this. I would come in the house. We'd start to get into this little argument thing. I would leave the house. I would come back in the house. I'd go, hi, new beginning. And it wouldn't work because she knew exactly what I was doing. <laughs> so that at any moment, you can begin again. You can set down what you have done and start again. But this is the traditional universal moment of new beginnings. It's January 1st. We ended last year, last night. It's over. 2016 was a good year. Nobody's complaining, saying it was wrong or bad or anything about it. It was a very good year. However, there must be something amazing about 2017 because it's here. It's fresh. It's an open, clear slate to start again. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? We get to choose. Isn't that lovely? And that's actually what we're going to work on in the workshop this afternoon at 4 o'clock. So even if you have no intention of walking on fire, if you can be here at 4 o'clock, come and do this with me. Because we're really going to look at what 2017 can be. It can be whatever we say it can be. This tells us we can create anything we choose. So let's come together and support one another in doing that. In the meantime, there's a way I've been thinking about life. Life is eternal. But a lifetime is not. We get these bodies for a certain period of time. We step into the third, three-dimensional world, and we get to experience it. Using this, once we get to know what it is and how to do it, we take charge of our lives, and we create what is ours to create. We get to say. But we have to be conscious about it, because we, do, we may have forever but we don't have this life forever. This particular body that we're in right now is with us now. Let's use it. Let's optimize it. Let's bring forth whatever it is that we came to do. And some people in the world think that this is about what I can get. It's not about what I can get. The I can get stuff will come. It does come. This is about what I can bring to life that only I can bring, like nobody else. What can you bring still to life that no one else can bring. This is a chance to look at that. So I want you to look at it. And I want to give you an example of someone who set a real standard for me about doing the very best of life. Now, this is about a person who has made her transition. So I don't want to shock anybody with that. And I'm not saying this is about making your transition. It's about utilizing your life optimally, no matter what. And, and Experiencing your dream. Move in the direction of your dream, no matter what. How can that be? This is Cindy Soul. She won that silly show on television, Jeopardy, six times. She was a six-time champion. Didn't, didn't break any records. Didn't some guy do it for almost a year? 50-something? Oh, it's just crazy. 
but she won it six days in a row. Why is that significant? Well, it seems that only the uh, producers and Alex Trebek, the host of that game show, knew this, but she was uh, in the last stages of terminal colon cancer when she appeared. In fact, they told her, and eh, you know, with our scheduling, we're gonna have to hold off having you as a contestant for a little while. And she said, well, that's really not gonna work. <laughs> and told them, and they said, okay, we're keeping this to ourselves, and we're gonna put you on and see how it goes. Now, her dream was to win $100,000. That seems to be a nice level where you've really excelled and gone into the top echelon of winners of Jeopardy, which is, has a cult following. You know, Jeopardy people in there? Ah, we got a few, we got a few, okay. So you know who this is probably. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So we're going to hear from, from Cindy about her experience with this. Go ahead, Judy. There it is. Yeah. We need sound. We need sound. I remember when I was in maybe ninth grade, I tried out for the teen tournament, and I didn't pass the written exam. This year, there was the in-person interview in Oklahoma City. That was really nerve-wracking. It was very nervous and things like that, even though it was just a practice game. Who is Sophia Vergara? Threat. What is Israel? Threat. Bad movies are kind of subjective, but I don't think anyone here would say that like Big Trouble in Little China deserved an Oscar, but I adore that movie. I adore that movie. I can't believe this is one of my favorite movies. I kind of had no idea what it would be like, and that that board was that huge, for example. So I, I think just experiencing this and seeing what it's really like in person has been phenomenal, and it's been fun. You knit and crochet things for them, but you have, I understand, a problem with proportion. Yeah, it's actually kind of more like a mixed blessing for my friends. Yeah. I just completed a baby blanket that um, ended up being probably more appropriate for a queen-size comforter. <laughs> <laughs> So I couldn't kind of just relax. As a result, it was pretty stressful, like each time. I must tell you that I was a little worried for Cindy at the beginning of the Double Jeopardy round on yesterday's program. Not only was she in the red, but she trailed her two challengers by over $6,000. But she persevered. Even when you think the odds are completely against you, somehow, you know, via luck or, or something, things can uh, work out. She wins $22,401 and now has a four-day total of $62,001. Way to go. A five-day total of $80,002. Way to go, Chad. We'll see you tomorrow. It was kind of just a, um, a line in the sand that I drew. I wanted to donate a lot of the money to cancer research, um, partly because this is hard and I'm sorry. Maybe I should uh, pause or something like that, but I'm, I'm dying of cancer. And I really would like the money that um, I win to be used to help others. And so this seems like a good opportunity. You are now a six-day champion with 103,803 and you get to go on and play again tomorrow. I am completely blown away with the people who showed up. My, my friend came from Texas and my brother flew from Sacramento and my mom flew all the way from Virginia. It's really wonderful to see their faces. I just am overwhelmed by the amount of support that they've shown me, and it's it's really touching. It's been an unreal experience. You see me again. That was all filmed in August, uh, and on December 5th, Cindy made her transition. But she is not a victim. She's a winner. She's a winner. She's showing us how no matter what, we can achieve whatever we set our intention on. A lifetime of wanting to be on that show. She made it onto that show. And she won. She, she did what she set out to do. A clear demonstration that we can do whatever we set out to do. Are we in alignment with our purpose? Are we doing the things that support us being here on planet Earth? We may live 
eternally in lifetime after lifetime. We only got this one for so long. How about we make 2017 an extraordinary year in that run so that we do some things that really make a difference in our lives and in the lives around us? If we do, then we win. Just like Sydney. Good idea, huh? Yeah. Happy New Year. Happy 2017. Here we go.
Whether you put something in today or whether you put something in at another time, your energy goes into this giving. And who are you but spirit let loose on planet Earth as you? God in form as us moves through us. This day, filling up this room, just go ahead and mute me. From the floor to the ceiling and all between the walls, this air is rich and blessed with God as us. And as spirit moves in our lives, I know things happen. So right here and right now, we are touched, we are blessed, and we are healed. I know that that energy is always here and always now, touching and blessing and healing us today, everyone who has ever been here, and everyone yet to come. And so it is. There are kids outside. Yes, there are.